What is going on? I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today because it's something that is very top of mind for for me right now and going to be happening in real time really soon. Um, I don't, by the time you listen to this, I could have already had the baby, but right now I am 37 weeks pregnant. I'm a little more than 37 weeks pregnant at the time that I'm recording this. Um, and what we're going to be talking about today is how I'm preparing for an unmedicated birth, which I think is really important to talk about because, you know, a lot of people will just you know, automatically be like, Hey, I just want to get the epidural, which that's totally fine. Like you do you whatever you want to do. But as somebody who is a holistic nutritionist, I, of course, my goal is to have an unmedicated birth, which means a natural birth, like through the vagina without any, you know, epidural or pain management or anything, or like actual like drugs for pain, anything like that. Obviously I'm going into this knowing that anything can happen. I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. I've never had a baby before. And even if I had every single birthing is different. So I, you know, I know that that could be a possibility that could end in a different way, but that isn't stopping me from doing everything that I can now to prepare myself for an unmedicated birth, because I know that that's what I really do want. Um, and maybe you are specifically listening to this. You want this as well, whether you are pregnant right now, or you're going to be pregnant, obviously, if you're listening to this podcast, you are someone who really values doing things as naturally as possible as well. So this is probably something that's on your mind. So I want to talk to you about the ways that I specifically am preparing for this. And then obviously, I'm going to be doing a podcast episode after baby is born with what actually happened. But these are the things that I'm doing to really be proactive about this. Because I am not someone who is just going to go in blind and just be like, okay, I want it to be unmedicated. So like, that's, that's all I'm going to do. Like, I'm not going to do anything to prepare for it. That's just not my style. Okay. I like to prepare for things. I like to hire people and take courses and learn from people who have done this before, because obviously that's the path of least resistance, right? It's to learn from someone who's done it, who's been there, who can support you. Um, of course, yeah, I could Google stuff, whatever, but like, I'm not interested in that. So we're going to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ways that I am preparing for an unmedicated birth. Okay. So we are going to start with the first, which is hypno babies. This is a course that my friend Jillian recommended to me. She was actually on this podcast. I'll link the episode I did with her below. She came on and talked to us about her unmedicated birth, just about parenting in general. She has three babies. Um, so it was a really cool episode and she's also an entrepreneur. So if you are someone who's a business owner, it's really cool to see other business owners who are also um, have children like doing both. So anyway, I'll link that below, but she is the one that recommended this course to me. And what it is, is it's a course that really teaches you how to get into a state of hypnosis that you're going to be in during your birthing time. Um, and also they teach you how to use different language. Like instead of saying during labor, I just said during my birthing time. Um, so it really helps you rewire your brain around the birthing experience because so often in society, birthing has just been something that's like, oh my God, it's horrible. It's painful. It's scary. It's crazy. And I'm not saying it's not those things, but we need, if, if you are someone like me who is going to enter this, wanting it to be unmedicated, we, I have to rewire my brain around these past stories that I've heard from society, from other people about how, oh my God, you're never going to be able to do it. It's so painful. It's horrible. It's labor, like labor, just the word alone labor makes it feel like it's a job and it's something that's going to be really, really hard. Um, so and again, not saying it's not going to be hard, but when we have better language around it, it supports it. So anyway, hypno babies, it's an entire course. I thought when I purchased it, that it was just going to be course like where you have like audios and it teaches you how to get into hypnosis and stuff like that. But it is so much more than that. It teaches you really just like educates you on things like delayed cord clamping, which I did a podcast episode on. I'll link that below. Um, just like the whole process of what's actually happening during your birthing time, how the baby moves from station to station, um, the different types of interventions that could be presented to you and ones that are they necessary? Are they not necessary? It really educates you so you can make empowered decisions 
throughout your pregnancy of wanting to do certain tests or not wanting to do certain tests, not needing a certain, you know, standard type of monitoring. So you can actually move around during your birthing. Like it has so much education on top of the actual hypnosis piece, which I wasn't expecting, but I am really, really enjoying learning about it. So I feel more empowered because again, we're never taught about anything like this. Like we are literally never taught about birth, about, you know, what's going to happen, like about the pregnancy process. Like we're not taught about any of this. So it's really nice to learn that information. So that's something that I love about it too. Um, and part of the hypno babies, I think I started it when I was 20 weeks, 20 or 25 weeks pregnant. I can't remember now. It was either 20 or 25 weeks pregnant that I started it. I think it was around 20 weeks in my second, it was definitely my second trimester um, where I started the course and started listening to the hypnosis tracks and learning how to actually do that. One of the things is a daily joyful pregnancy and birth affirmations track that you could listen to that at any time. Um, when you do the hypnosis ones, like you have to be like sitting down. It's like you get into like a hypnosis. Um, but the affirmations you can listen to while you're driving. I listen to it at night when I'm cleaning up dinner or when I'm brushing my teeth, washing my face before I get into the shower. It's like 40 minute audio. So I listen to it as I'm doing other things um, because it's just about rewiring your subconscious. And it talks about how, you know, your body is meant to birth. It's a natural experience. Like you deserve a safe and easy pregnancy. Like it's just, it goes into, it starts with like joyful affirmations about your actual pregnancy. And then it moves into joyful affirmations about your actual birthing time. So that really helps me rewire my brain and drops the fear around actually giving birth because there is a big fear around that. Like, holy shit, this is only one way this baby's coming out. Well, this could be two ways the baby comes out, but like it still has to come out and that could be really scary. So what I love about these affirmations is that it really helps drop the fear around it and makes it like, this is a normal, natural process. Your body knows exactly what to do. Your baby knows exactly what to do. Like you're built for this and it's it doesn't have to be that scary. So that has really helped me drop a lot of fear around the actual birthing time. Honestly, I'm more scared for the afterbirth, like, you know, making sure that I'm going to be able to breastfeed, which I'm also taking a course for that. But um, just like the parenting part after, I'm more nervous for that than I am for the actual birthing time, right? Just something in my nose is very itchy. I'm sorry, if you're watching YouTube, that's what's going on over here. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, so that is one piece of it. And then you listen to a daily hypnosis every single day. Um, I do it at night because uh, I do it when I'm in bed and I fall asleep every single time. Um, and I was like reading up on it. I'm like, holy shit, like, is this even working because I fall asleep every time? And all the people like that have done hypnosis before, because you see like reviews and stuff like that. They said the same exact thing. They fell asleep every time and it still worked and it still, it still really, really helped them during their birthing time because again, it's going into your subconscious. Um, so that's how I do it. I do it in bed at night um, and it gives you like a schedule of when to do all of them. And sometimes like I don't even feel like I'm going into hypnosis, but it's not the point of you having to feel anything. It's the point of you practicing this. So then when your birthing time actually starts, you are able to drop in to focus on your breath, to focus on, they call it like hypno anesthesia, where you like numb out your body type of thing. So anyway, obviously it's hard to explain. You have to like be in the course to know it, but it's really, really awesome. And that is the number one thing that I've been doing since I think, again, I think it was around 20 weeks that I started this. I'll put the link below for the course. When you join and when you sign up for the course, they automatically send you like an affiliate link. So I will put that below. I, I think the code is just code Corinne for a discount on that. I'll put it below though. Um, but it's super affordable in general. And I highly, highly recommend it if you are someone who does want to do an unmedicated birth. So that's the number one thing I'm doing. The second thing I did was hire a doula. Um, this is major. I mean, obviously I am giving birth in a hospital. Um, my husband and I talked about it and I really just like, especially for my first pregnancy, I wanted to be in a hospital setting because I, I would just be too nervous to do like a home birth for my first birthing experience. Cause I don't know what to expect. I just, I just know I would be too nervous. 
also we're in the process of selling and moving and buying. And like, well, I was like, I don't even know what home we're going to be in at the time. At the time of this recording though, we're finally in contract on a new home, which I'm so excited for. We're not going to be in there until after the baby's born. But anyway, that just wasn't an option. There really aren't birthing centers near us. So um, I'm, so we are going to be birthing in a hospital. So with that, I was like, okay, I'm 100% hiring a doula then, be- especially because we're going to be in a hospital. I want to make sure that I have that person on our team to support me. So she is going to be coming to our house when I am at a certain point in my labor. Obviously, I'm going to call her, let her know as soon as I'm in labor. And we're going to stay home as long as we can during you know, the birthing time um, before we get to the hospital. Um, the, her whole, the whole point that her goal is to keep us home as long as possible, to be in the hospital to keep us home as long as possible to be in the hospital for a shorter period of time. Um, so like when we get there, the goal, she's like, hopefully when you get there, you're like eight or nine centimeters dilated. And then we're like ready to go. Like, that's really the goal because a lot of times when you're in the hospital, it could slow down labor because it's obviously a more stressful environment. Um, and it's, that's another thing that I'm doing, you know, again, staying home as long as possible and going through the majority of the birthing time home in a safe, calm, comfortable environment, because you have to be, your body needs to be in a state of openness and release. And when you are in fight or flight mode, if you're nervous, if you're in an environment, you know, like if you're all this beeping from the monitoring and all this stuff, it could tighten you up and it could cause you to not have, you know, as much of a release and as much as a dilation, the baby moving out as easily and quickly as possible. So being home as long as possible is one of the things that I love about having a doula. Um, she's also helping us with our birthing plan, um, talking about doing intermittent monitoring when we do get to the hospital so that I can move around with ease instead of being hooked up not doing IVs. So again, I could go in the shower in the hospital. I could move around, like do whatever types of positions. That's another thing that she does with us is um, she, well, there were also two meetings before we even had the baby of her, like talking to us about everything. And it was just so amazing. Um, But she knows certain positions that are really helpful to ease pain and to make the baby move down and out more quickly and more efficiently. So she's just going to coach us through the entire process. Um, One week before my due date, she's instructed me to do curb walking, um, stair climbing, ball bouncing, hip rolls, all of these things to help naturally start moving the baby down and out before the actual, you know, like time begins. Um, She's going to be coming on the podcast after I give birth. I 100% want her to come on, but I was like, I want you to come on after we already give we, but she is in the process with us, but after I give birth, because I want to talk about like what we did, the whole process, how it actually turned out. Like, it's going to be so fun. I'm so excited to actually have her on. So anyway, um, having her, um, she also helps make sure the baby is in optimal positioning. So at one point during my pregnancy, my baby was like sitting on my sciatica and it was so painful. I like couldn't even walk because the sciatic pain was so bad. She came over. She did like these certain spinning positions with me. The baby moved. I have not had sciatica pain since. So as of right now, the baby is head down in perfect positioning. But if the baby wasn't, she would be able to do certain positions with me to get the baby in optimal positioning. And she does that even during birthing time. Like when, you know, labor, quote unquote, starts, if the baby isn't moving down effectively, if she could sense, because she could tell by like feeling the baby is in a good position, she could do certain positions with me to make sure they're in a good position, because obviously we want the baby in a good position to come out naturally unmedicated, all the things. Um, so that's another thing that she's doing to help with us. Um, again, staying home in my calm, comfortable environment as long as possible. Like that is number two. Okay. So that is something that I highly recommend investing in is a doula or like a midwife or something. If you are someone that is doing unmedicated birth, my mom is also a Reiki practitioner. So she is going to be coming to the house also and doing some Reiki on me while I'm going through the labor process. Um, because you know, that is really helpful energetic wise helping with pain, helping with moving energy through. So I'm super excited about that. I'm lucky enough where my mom is a Reiki practitioner, so I'm able to do both, but um, that's something else I'm doing as well. Okay. The third thing is I'm having red raspberry leaf tea every single day, starting my third trimester um, to help strengthen the uterine lining and uh, sorry, to help strengthen uterine uh, like muscles for contraction purposes. And I'm having six dates a day starting at 36 weeks. Now I did a completely separate episode on why I'm doing that on the science behind red raspberry leaf tea and dates, because I knew it would be way too long of an episode if I did all of it together. So I already dropped that episode. So you could check 
the link below for that episode if you want to know why I'm doing the red raspberry leaf tea and the dates every single day and how that's actually helping me have an unmedicated birth. Okay, so that is number three. Number four is stretching every single day, starting my third trimester. Actually, I was really stretching every day always, but I'm really doing it like longer and more specific stretches, like my inner thighs, um, my hips, really making sure I'm opening up and doing specific stretches and strengthening, continuing to strengthen my pelvic floor, which I've been doing prior to pregnancy with Pilates during my entire pregnancy to really strengthen that pelvic floor support, which is also going to help postpartum. But I'm also in my third trimester focusing on releasing the pelvic floor, doing certain stretches that open it up, that release it, sending messages of safety to my pelvic floor. Because again, so often we think that we are just like need to strengthen the pelvic floor, which is really important. But a lot of times we have actually really tense pelvic floor. So we have to learn how to release it because when you're pushing a baby out, that is a releasing energy and you don't want it to be too tight and wired up because then you're not going to be able to release properly. So I'm really focusing on doing that every single day. Hold on, I need to pause for some water. Okay. Um, those are more like tangible things that I'm doing. Um, well, actually this one is tangible too. So that was for number five is regulating my nervous system. Um, part of that is meditating daily. So I've been meditating daily for almost a decade now. Um, so this is something that I've just always been doing, but part of having unmedicated birth is being able to Focus on your breath and your breathing, which is such a huge portion of it, and being able to redirect your thoughts away from the pain onto something else, onto your breath. And that's really what meditation is. It's not going away from pain necessarily, but it's more so about redirecting your brain from going down the rabbit hole of thoughts that you want to have when you're sitting down in meditation and refocusing on your breath. So when you're doing this constant training of your brain during meditation on a daily basis of refocusing, 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 that practice is going to help me not only learn how, not only be able to continue to breathe through the pain, but also be able to refocus my thoughts instead of focusing just on the pain, that muscle memory that I have from meditating is going to help me you know, shift my thoughts from the pain onto my breath. So that is just something that I do on a daily basis anyway. And I'm like, wow, this is definitely going to help me in my, in my birthing time. So for sure, regulating my nervous system with meditation is something that's definitely going to help me and that I'm doing continuously to help prepare me for an unmedicated birth. So if you are someone that hasn't adopted a meditation practice, first of all, it's beneficial for literally everything in your life, not just for having unmedicated birth, but I highly recommend adding this in if you do want to have an unmedicated birth. And it just is such a nice thing for you to help regulate your nervous system because once the baby comes out, the, you guys are still like energetically and emotionally tied. Like your emotional system, your nervous system is tied to their nervous system and they're going to respond to how your nervous system is regulated. So it's just something that's so nice to do while you're pregnant. And then when the baby is born, have them on your chest, do the meditating, like breathing together. Obviously it's going to look very different post baby than it does when the baby's inside, but you know what I'm saying? Okay. So we have, okay, hypno babies course, the doula, red raspberry leaf tea and dates, stretching and pelvic floor support and release. Um, number five was regulating my nervous system medita and meditating daily. Number six is communicating these desires with my doctor, with my OBGYN. So in my birthing plan, obviously it says like, you know, in no, uh, which I went through with the, in the motherhood unfiltered membership, like the full details on this, but intermittent monitoring so I can move around with ease, you know, as minimal as possible interventions, unless it's like, you know, life-threatening for me or baby, stuff like that. And I'm talking to my doctor about this beforehand. Obviously the nurses are the ones that are going to be there longer than the doctor is. So I bringing my birthing plan that I typed out and my doula looked over for me to the actual hospital to give to the nurses that day. But I'm also talking about it to my OBGYN before um, because something that um, I should actually add this to the list of how I'm preparing for an unmedicated birth is letting him know that I will not be birthing on my back. And I told him this months ago, because again, when you're birthing on your back, it obviously, gra hello, gravity, like what the F, why is it ever a thing to be pushing? It, it, imagine like trying to shit on your back. Like how much harder would that be? It just makes no sense when gravity is part of life. So I talked to him months ago about it. I'm someone who has a bruised tailbone just from forever because I broke it in high school from cheerleading, whatever, another story for another time. 
And I know that if I'm pushing it on my back, it's going to tear my tailbone up even more. That's just not an option. It has more um, complications when you're pushing on your back with more, um, more instances of tearing. It takes longer because you're literally not in an optimal position for opening and for gravity to take place. So that's one of the major things that is a hard no for me that I wanted to talk to him about. And he did have pushback on. He was like, well, it's harder for me when if you are not on your back, because I have to like contort my body to try and get the baby. He's like, so why don't you just like, you can move around, do whatever you want while you're going through labor. But then when it's time for pushing, like you'll go on your back. And I was like, no, <laughs> like that's actually not what's happening. Um, So having these conversations ahead of time is really, really important, especially because I'm not going to want to have this conversation while I'm in the middle of, you know, going through contractions and stuff. It just has to be something that's already solidified. So I'm having this conversation with him again at my 38 week appointment and telling him um, I'm also like, no one is allowed or uh, permitted to offer me an epidural. I will ask for one if I need it. So don't even offer it. And I will not be birthing on my back. Those are two major things that are in my birthing plan. Obviously, there's so many other things that are in there. But as we're talking about preparing for an unmedicated birth, these are two of the things that are real strong no's for me. Um, and, you know, talking to him about the possible positions that my doula and I have talked about for what I will be birthing in, um, either like on all fours or hanging over the bed or, you know, she's like, you will know what feels best for you. Cause that's the other thing when you are unmedicated, you also can feel, obviously you feel everything. So you'll naturally feel when to push. You'll naturally feel what, what position is comfortable for you. Um, so that's why it could also be a quicker process instead of just like on, uh, you know, command pushing when you can't feel anything from epidural and they tell you like, okay, now it's time to push. It's like, is it though? Cause like you can't even feel if it is time to or not. So anyway, that's one other thing, but communicating your desires with your doctor and telling them, you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm not birthing on my back. I'm not doing an epidural unless I ask for one. So like, this is what you can expect. So that's another thing that I'm doing. Um, two more things last, uh, I don't even know what number on whatever number on six, seven, doesn't matter. I'm talking to people who've done it. Okay. I'm not talking to people who have had traumatic birthing experiences uh, while they are real and I have compassion for them. This is not the time in my life where I want to hear about it. This is not the time in my life where I am just like open to talking about all of that. I am talking to people who have had an unmedicated birth who can share their experiences with me. So I know that it's possible and I know that other people have lived through it and that it's something that it's, it's possible, right? Like you have to see what's possible in order to know that you can do it. So I'm doing that. And then the last thing is I'm really thinking about the why behind it. And it's not just to be like, Oh, cool. Like I had unmedicated birth. Like I'm so strong. Like that's really not it. It's because I really don't want that medication in my body. Like I said, I'm someone who I, I don't even know last time I took an Advil. Okay. Like I do not like taking medication. It's only as a, as like, uh, not as needed as a, like an emergency situation. Like when I had to go on antibiotics last year for the first time in like a decade, because I stepped on a sea urchin when we were on our honeymoon in Hawaii and you could die. So I had to go on it. Like, yes, then obviously I'm going to go on medication, but otherwise it's something I really don't want to do. Um, I know it also helps with an easier recovery. Once the baby is out, you can move around with ease. The pain stops, you have less bleeding. Like it, there's just so many benefits to it that I am like holding on to and knowing like the pain is going to end after the pain is going to end after and just like holding that vision onto that. Um, so those are all the things that I'm doing. Let me just do a little recap. So we do, we have hypno babies, which I'm going, that course is amazing. I'm going to link it in the show notes. I highly, highly, highly recommend that if you want to have an unmedicated birth, that's like the number one thing I would be doing. Um, so hypno babies, number two, I have a doula, Cannot wait to have her come on the show. She's amazing. If you do live on Long Island, like I do, she's the Long Island doula. Highly recommend her. Her name is also Corinne, which is so cool. Um, my acupuncturist used her and then recommended her to me. So I love her so much. Um, number three, red raspberry leaf tea and dates every single day. I will link that podcast episode below because I dove deep into the science behind that. So really recommend listening to that if you haven't already. Number four is stretching daily and pelvic floor support and release. Um, number five is uh, regulating my nervous system with meditation daily. Number six is communicating with communicating my desires with my, my doctor so he knows what is up. Um, number seven, talking to people who've done it. And number eight, thinking about why I actually want to do this and just hold holding the vision on to that. Um, and that's, what's been really helpful. So stay tuned for what happens, but I know some of you are really interested in also having unmedicated birth. So I just wanted to give my perspective of what I'm doing. If you are someone who has had an unmedicated birth, 
please DM me at Corinne Angelica. Again, at the time that you're listening to this, I could potentially already have had the baby. Who knows? Um, But message me. Let me know what your experience was. If you had an unmedicated birth, what had helped you? I would love to hear your feedback. If you're in our podcast Facebook group, which we have a free Facebook community for people who listen to this podcast, I'll put that link. The link is always in the show notes for that too, if you want to join it. I do like Q and A's in there and stuff like that. Obviously I'm not going to right now uh, while I'm on maternity, but normally I do them monthly. So um, you could always message in there too and like say what your experience has been. Um, Again, if it's one that is positive about unmedicated birth and anything that you did to help support you, I would love to hear about it. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. I am so excited to keep you posted on what actually happens with the birthing experience, but I know it's going to be amazing. It's going to be perfect no matter what. So thank you so much for being here. I love you. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.